Yeah, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Let me get, make sure this thing is straight on here. Okay. All right. So let's get on Facebook Live today, tonight, and talk about faith. What is faith? What is faith? So let's uh, let's go ahead and get into the word about faith. If you're just now joining live, I see my wife on here. What's up, baby? Welcome, welcome. Um, if you're replaying this video later on, um, we're going to talk about faith. What is faith? What's up, Israel? I see Israel is on here. Man, you got to watch out for Israel, man. How is Man, you got to watch out for Israel. I was supposed to do this Facebook Live like 15 minutes ago. But because I was trying to text Israel back, I had a, a big old cup full of ice and water. And, I, and he texts me, so I was like, let me text Israel back. Boom, dropped my cup all over the kitchen floor. It got on our bench, on my wife's purse, all over the floor, under the, under the pantry, uh, all in the cracks, splash everywhere. Um, so I'm not really feeling Israel too much. I kind of don't even want Israel to watch this Facebook Live and, and learn about faith, but I mean, he's on here. It is what it is. <laughs> my, wife, my wife was in the shower and I told her what happened. <laughs> She's over here laughing. That's messed up, man. I'm never, I'm never going to text you back. I'm going to call you back next time um, through speaker. I'm going to make sure a, a speaker, Bluetooth, or something like that. Because I, if I got to put my hands on my phone, I'm not going to call you back. I'm not going to text you, man. Because you, you make me make a, make a mess everywhere. You know, you just slowed us down tonight, man. You slowed us down, man. So I had a, this is the infamous cup right here. I, I like the big plastic ones because it, it keeps everything cold. So this is the infamous cup right here that uh, ganged up uh, with Israel against me to make made me make a mess everywhere. I had to get towels, rags, all types of stuff, man. It was just a lot of work, man. But I have faith. So let's talk about faith. <laughs> That's the story. That's the story for tonight. That's why it's like 7.15 right now. What time is it? I was supposed to be on here at 7 o'clock. <laughs> I'm never texting Israel again in my life, man. I promise. <laughs> Bless you guys. Love you guys, man. Glad to see you guys on here. Michelle, what's up? Isaiah, love you, bro. Good to see you on here. Um, we're going to get into a few scriptures. So there's not just one text and not just one passage tonight. Um, so we're going to look at a few scriptures um, about faith tonight, okay? And I hope it blesses you. 7.30? Oh, okay, yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's that's how big the mess was. It's 7.30 already. So um, we're going to talk about faith. What is faith? What is faith? If you believe that um, this video might be something that one of your friends or family members might want to see on your Facebook page, go ahead and share this video right now for people to join in live and, and see it. Um, we're going to interact. Um, we're going to um, allow people to uh, ask questions and give people the opportunity to, to you know, give some feedback and uh, or ask for elaboration and, and ask and, and talk and things like that. So go ahead and, and share this video if you want to. Let's grow. Let's grow. That's right, Michelle. Let's grow. Let's grow. All right. So the first scripture we're going to go to, guys, is, of course, right? You guys, you guys already knew we were going to talk about this scripture um, regarding the faith. So we're going to go to Hebrews 11. Verse one, of course, right? Thank you, baby. My wife shared the video. Thank you, baby. Awesome. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. All right. So um, if you're there, Hebrews 11, verse one. And even if you're watching this in the future, you know, once, once this is posted, I want you to grab your Bible, too. I want you to look at all these scriptures we're going to look at tonight and let's grow together in the word of God. Not in preaching, not in somebody's opinion, not in, in just talking. Let's actually look at the word tonight. That's what's going to help us because that's what's supposed to stick with you. Because so that so that when you go through your own situations, when the Facebook live person or the preacher person is not around, giving you sermon after sermon, you can actually get the scriptures of God brought to your remembrance by the Holy Spirit. So we got to look at the word, okay? So it's very important. So let's look at Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is something, is the substance of things hoped for. Hey, welcome, welcome. What's up? What's up? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. 
it's something, right? For it's the evidence of things not seen. Okay, if we pause right there, we can clearly see that if you have faith, whatever you have faith on, you're not going to see at that very moment. While you are having faith, you're not seeing the outcome. You're not seeing the results. You're not seeing the promise yet. Okay, yet. So it says it's the substance of something that you hope for. Okay. Okay. Hola, ma. Hola. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. So it's the substance of things hoped for. If, you, if, if you've seen hope in the Bible, when it talks about hope, uh, it says that you don't hope for something that you have. You hope for something that's coming, something that's futuristic, something that you're supposed to have, something you're looking forward to. You never hope for something that you already have. You only hope for something that you want to have, that you expect and anticipate to have. That's simple, right? What's up, Thomas? Bless you, bro. Bless you. Bless you. Welcome, man. Welcome. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by what? By faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. So by faith, the people in the Bible, right? The people that we call, you know, the, the men of old and, and the men of God and, and, and the generals of the faith, the real generals of the faith, right, that are found in the Bible, um, the men of God, right, Abraham and, and Moses and, and all these people, Jacob, right, I, right, all these people have these stories and we talk about these people and their names and their stories and lives are written in the Bible because they had faith. If they would have never walked in faith, they would have, they probably would have even been written about in the Bible. Like God, God, God wouldn't have, wouldn't have found their stories worthy enough to put in the Holy Scriptures for us to learn from and get something from, right? So they're only here, we only hear about them because they actually believed God. Amen. What's up, Natalie? Bless you, bless you. So we're, we're looking at Hebrews 11 right now. We're going to look at a few different scriptures tonight as we talk about faith. Uh, and we started with, of course, Hebrews 11, 1, right? By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Stop. This right here shows you that God operates in faith too. God too has faith. God also doesn't see things um, at the moment, but he knows what's supposed to be. And he commands things to happen. And, and, and that's how he created the world, right? So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So basically everything that we see God created, but when God created everything, guess what? There was nothing seen. He did not see something. He actually created everything and something out of nothing. That's how God operates. And that's how faith is. And that's why he tells us the just shall live by faith. Why? Because we're supposed to do things the same way that our father, God, does them. Amen. So we're just following his example. He is the God of faith. Amen. When Jesus came into the picture. He walked by faith. He believed what the Father told him to do. He believed that the things that the Father told him to speak were true and were for the benefit of the people he was speaking to and were going to be for the glory of God. Amen? Come on, let's grow. So if we look at the beginning, right, when God created the worlds and we read the Bible and the Bible says that, man, Jesus, the Lamb of God, he like, him being sent to be slain for us, for our sins, to save us and deliver us and redeem us. This actually was preordained and planned and purposed by God since the beginning, before the foundations of the earth. So before things were created, God already knew he was going to send himself, right? His son, he was going to come. God was going to become flesh. He was going to dwell among his own creation and save his own creation, even though they were not not going to comprehend what he was doing. So since the beginning, God already knew what he was going to do. And guess what? It took all the way from Genesis, all the way, all the way, all the way to the book of Matthew for Jesus to actually show up. But God, all through those books, all, those, all through those scriptures, all through those different prophets, all through those different men of God and leaders and judges, 
and, 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 and worshipers and kings, God spoke through them and spoke to them, telling them of the Messiah that was to come. God was speaking by faith because the Messiah was not on the earth yet, but he was to come. And God kept speaking it. God kept believing it. God kept telling his people to expect it, to write about it, to prophesy about it, to write the scriptures about it, to write in the Torah about it, to declare it, to expect the Messiah, expect the Savior. He's coming soon. God was moving in faith because he knew something. You see, the key, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the key about faith, the key of, of walking in faith, guys, is that you have to know something and, and know that you know it and not allow contradictions of what you know to steer you away from your hope. That's the, that's, that's the key. Now, I don't know if you guys have a pen or notepad, but that's something you might want to might want to write down. The key regarding faith and living in faith is that you must know something and be completely assured of that something and stubbornly not allow others and not allow things that contradict that something, that belief to steer you away from hoping for it and expecting it and anticipating. It. Okay? All right. So we see that by faith, these men of God are even spoken about today because they actually believed God and walked by faith, right? All right, so let's go to another one. Let's go to another scripture here. In Hebrews 11, it talks about Noah, Abraham, Enoch, Abel, Jacob, Moses. Like It talks about all the men of God here that actually have a testimony because of faith. Faith, not because God did it all through them, you know, there's a there's a weird doctrine out there that, you know, you being saved is not even because of your own faith, that your your walk in Christ is not even your own faith, um, that that everything that happens in your life, it's not even you being involved. God's just making it happen like a genie or like a fairy or like a video game player. And you're just in the video game being controlled. Like that's not biblical at all. Right here, it says that all these prophets and all these men of God from Genesis to the, to the rest of the scriptures, it says that they are only here. They are only talked about. They only accomplished what they accomplished. They only saw what they saw because they believed. They had to do something on their part. Listen, the gospel always includes God's grace, but the always the gospel will always include intentionality from our part and faith from our part. If the message that you're listening to includes grace but doesn't include faith or includes faith but doesn't include uh, intentionality and an effort from your part then it's probably not the gospel it's not biblical scriptural new testament and it's not what god wants you to learn you can't renew your mind with something that's not true because it's not going to help you if it's not true only the truth sets you what free we all want to be free amen all right so let's go to another scripture okay let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. You guys ready? Israel said amen. Israel said amen. We're not robots. That's right. We're not robots. I shouldn't even be talking to Israel right now because I'm still mad. But yeah, man, that's true, bro. We're not robots. We're not robots, bro. God is real and so are we. Amen. God plans it. God wills it, purposes it, God ordains it, God calls us, God fills us, right? But we must still submit, we must still surrender, we must still yield, we must still believe, we must still obey, we must still do, right? All right, so Romans chapter 4. All right, so Romans chapter 4. It says, verse 1 again, it says, What then shall we say that Abraham was found that, hold up. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. 
For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So right there it says that whatever Abraham did, uh, it wasn't by his own strength, by his own ability, by his flesh. It was because he believed. Um, God did not justify Abraham and God did not promise Abraham so many things as he did because of you know, flesh because of something that he that he earned or something that he deserved or something that he worked for. It says that it was by faith, uh, meaning it was a promise. It was a grace thing. Grace is the, the word grace. When, when we talk about grace, God, all, guys, always make sure that when you look at grace and think about grace is always connected to a gift. It's always connected to something that was given to you that you did not work for or earn. Okay, and, and and just keep it right there, and just stop it right there, right? Because a lot of times we we hear a lot of preaching that gets carried away. Like when I say carried away, I don't mean deep into the Bible. I mean carry. I mean it gets carried away off of the Bible, <laughs> and there's a difference, right? You know, a lot of people think they're 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 deep, and you know they got all this revelation, and they're, you know it's really just a whole bunch of theories and a, bu a bunch of you know, human wisdom and, 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 and it's doctrine of men that try to sound deep because they're they're bored, right? They, they got bored of this, so they try to make things up, to try to make things sound juicier and deeper, right? Don't listen to those philosophies and theoretical things. Those are theories. Those are, those are you know, th those will not help you. So stick in this, stick to this, stay in this, right? Because this is what's going to help us actually see the things that God promised Abraham that Jesus spoke and promised his disciples. Amen. So it says that Abraham did not acquire these things. Abraham was not justified. Abraham did not become right with God because of his flesh, but because of his faith, because of his faith in God. It says that he was counted righteous, meaning he was justified. You know, when we say that we were justified through faith in Christ, it means that we were made righteous, right? Meaning we were given peace with God. We were removed from the enemies of God category and we became people of God, right with God. That's what that means, right? Um, so that's what happened to Abraham. He was justified or he was made righteous because of his faith. And it says it right there, verse three, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Why? How, why? Why? Was he a, why was he considered righteous? Because he believed God. Wow. Okay. So now believing God is a must um, under the category of faith. That was obvious, right? Believing God is a must under the category of righteousness and justification. I think we, we knew that already, right? Believing in Christ, being justified by faith in Christ, right? Being born again. I think I think we knew that, right? But it, it's gonna get a little it's gonna get a little better. Watch this. Watch this. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Now let's stop right there, guys, because this is a, a scripture that a lot of people get uh, confused by, and they change up the word of God with it. Um, it's basically saying the same thing that verse 3 said. Verse 3 said, Abraham was justified by his faith, not by something that he did, right? And that directly connects to us as believers under the new covenant we were justified by our faith in christ by our faith in in the gospel that he preached and the things that he taught and promised we were justified by that faith meaning it wasn't something we worked for now that's where it stops right if you're watching this video and you and if you consider yourself a follower of christ a christian a son of god a daughter of god um whatever terminology you're using you're born again, right? If you're watching this video and you're born again, that means that you were born again because you were forgiven of your sins by God. And the only way you could have been forgiven of your sins by God is if you believed in the words of Jesus. In the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the soon return of Jesus. 
right? If you believed in that, then you were justified by that faith. Why? Because you're not the one who went to the cross. You're not the one who fulfilled all righteousness. You're not the one who did not sin. Jesus was, right? So that means Jesus did the hard work and now we receive the benefits of him becoming sin and condemning sin in the flesh on the cross, right? Basically him becoming the sacrifice so that his shed will be, his blood will be shed and, 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 and presented in the mercy seat of God's temple in heaven so that mankind can believe in him and, and by that faith in him, that blood will cleanse mankind from our unrighteousness and sins, right? That means that Jesus did all the work and all we had to do was believe. That means we did not work for what? Our born again our born again experience our new identity our forgiveness of sins and justification that's what that means okay now we got to stop right there because a lot of people don't stop there and then they keep on going and then say oh it's all by grace that means I'm not supposed to work. I'm not supposed to do nothing. Um, my, my good works, my good fruit, my obedience to God is not what saves me. It's not what makes me right with God. It's not. And, and we get we get carried away again, not deep in this, but we carried away off of this because right here is only referring to you initially being justified by your faith, not by your own righteousness or works. Okay, that's all it's saying. It's saying that Jesus paid the price for us to become um, the righteousness of God in him to be brought to peace with God and no longer um, to, and to no longer be his enemies. Right. That's all it's saying, which is powerful. Um, and we know this because it says grace is, is you receiving something right here that you did not work for. But if you work for it, it's no longer grace. It's it's a debt that's owed to you because you 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 deserve wages or a paycheck for something you work for. But if but if you receive something, if you receive a paycheck and you didn't work for it, that's a gift. That's grace. If you receive a paycheck and you work for it, that's not grace. That's not a gift. You deserve that. You earned that. They better pay you that, right? <laughs> so so that's what that that type of faith is that born again experience faith that justification now i'm right with god faith right and then the other faith that we that we saw in hebrews 11 was the type of faith that says god said something i believe it god told me this will happen this will take place these promises were going to come about and manifest and this was going to come to fruition and be fulfilled and i'm going to see this and do this and live this way and have this and be with this and meet this person and this is going to happen and god's going to do this boom, 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 boom. that's the type of faith that we need now that we are people of god children of god now that we've been justified we can now have the same type of faith that abraham had right that abraham had when he not only believed god but let's go to it. Let's go to James. Let's go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. If you're, if you're still on here, if you're now joining or if you're watching this later on, once I've uploaded and posted, um, go ahead and share this video so your friends and family can see this and understand what faith is and how to walk in it a little better. Okay, it'll be a blessing. Uh, Fearson said covenant is two sided. We have to do our part. Um, yeah, James too. Um, yeah, James too, uh, baby. Yeah, yeah, Pearson. I mean, we're in covenant with God, and, and, and that covenant with God that He gave us um, is a covenant um, through Jesus, right? And we know that Jesus did all the work for us to to be born again, for us to be forgiven, for us to be justified. Now that we have been justified, um, there's something that we have to do, right? There's a doing, there's a working. Amen. So let's go to um, James chapter 2. Okay, and let's go to verse 17. You guys are there. Thank you for sharing, um, baby. Thank you for sharing, Natalie. Bless you guys. Let's go. James 2, 17. Thus also faith by itself if it does not have works, is dead. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay. So in order for us to not be confused by that, we have to remember we are at peace with God. We already were born again 
not with works, but with faith in Christ and faith alone. That's justification. It's done. Now that we are justified, there's a demonstration. Um, there's a lifestyle of proof that needs to be seen um, if we have if we still, still, right, truly believe what we initially believed, if we believed the message here, if we still believe that God is coming soon, that God will judge the world, all people according to their works, if we still believe that Jesus Christ did come, already came, was born through the Virgin Mary, lived a life of righteousness, obedience to God, died for us as a sacrificial lamb for us to be forgiven of our sins, be justified with God and receive the Holy Spirit and receive eternal life. If we still believe that, because you have to still believe, it says continue in the faith. It says work out your salvation, right? If we still believe that, then our faith has works and is not dead. If we still believe that, then we're going to see the proof of that belief. See, God says, I'm going to send the Messiah way in the beginning. And guess what God did? He talked about it and prophesied about it in all these different books, all the way to Matthew. And then Jesus came, right? So God believed that he was going to redeem us for a very long time. And the proof of his faith, of God's own faith, is what it says in, in, in Romans 5. It says that God demonstrated his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God also demonstrated his desire to save us, the, 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 the Jews and the Gentiles, to deliver us from our sins, to give us eternal life. To fill us with his spirit. God promised he would do that. And he had to believe it from Genesis to Matthew. But he also proved it in Matthew when Jesus came. It said he demonstrated his love for us <laughs> by sending Christ. Amen. So there's a demonstration of true faith. So let's read um, James 2 verse 17. Thus also faith by itself. If it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. I will show you my faith by my works. How did God show us that he really meant it when he said he was going to send the Messiah? He actually came to the world. He actually became flesh. He became a human himself. So it says in Romans, I think it's 5, 8, he demonstrated it by actually doing it, walking like it. So it says right here, I will show you my faith by my works. The Bible says be imitators of God. The Bible says be holy in your conduct just as your father in heaven is holy. So it's telling us to do the same thing. Why do you think Jesus said, follow me? What's he saying? Follow me to heaven? No, no. He's saying, follow me. Become my student. Become my disciple, my learner. I'm going to mentor you. Everything I do, monkey see, monkey do, you will need to do. That's what Jesus is saying when he said, follow me. Why do you think his apostles, everybody but Judas, remained and they ended up doing everything Jesus did while he was on earth. They ended up casting out demons. They ended up healing the sick. They ended up working miracles. They ended up raising the dead. They ended up preaching boldly. They ended up being persecuted. They ended up going to prison. They ended up getting killed. Come on. Follow me means do as I do. Copycat me as much as you can. Copycat my teachings. Copycat my lifestyle. Copycat my attitude. Copycat my example. Amen? So it's saying, I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. They're scared of him. 
<laughs> so it says a lot of people claim to believe God. A lot of people claim to be saved. A lot of people claim to be Christians because they're only mere confessors. They say, I believe in Jesus. They say, Jesus is Lord. They say, Jesus is King. They say, I was baptized and I confess Jesus. But if they truly believe in their hearts, there has to be a what? Romans 5, eight, demonstration. Works. That's all James is saying, guys. <laughs> we have to continue in the faith because if it's real, we're going to see it. There's actually going to be a work of righteousness. We're actually going to follow Jesus' ex Jesus's example. And it says that Jesus did what? He did the will of the Father. Jesus didn't do what? He didn't sin. So, you know, whenever there's a message about grace or the new covenant that tries to brush sin under the carpet, under the rug, it's false. Because if sin is still included in your in your theology, if sin is still included in your doctrine, then it's not, it's not a, a gospel of you following Jesus because Jesus did not sin. Okay? Now, because we're still growing up, because we're still learning how to become, because we're still renewing our minds, because we're still undoing uh, the thinking and the patterns and the, and, and the ways of the world, um, we may stumble here and there. Um, but the Bible says God is able to keep you from stumbling. Now, he might be able, he's able to keep you from stumbling. That's why we need to stay connected to the Father. We need to stay in communication, in relationship with him, and in the reading of his word so that we can what? Be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of our minds and begin to look more and more like Jesus. But Jesus himself said, I'm the vine. And you're the branch. There is no life in the branch. But as long as you stay connected to me, the vine, as long as you stay hooked up with me, you're going to bear good fruit. So what happens when we're not bearing good fruit? We might not be hooked up. We might be off the hook. Hello? <laughs> we might be off the hook. All right? Yo, this water tastes so good, but I'm sure that first cup that I spilled was probably better. Thank you, Israel. Thank you, bro. Love you, man. I honor you, bro. I appreciate I appreciate you, man. I appreciate your text message, man. You always text at the right time, bro. You always text at the right time. <laughs> it might be off the hook. That's right. Yeah. Thank, oh, that's good, Pearson. Good to hear you, bro. That's good to hear, bro. Awesome. Hallelujah, Natalie said. All right. So, where were we? James 2, verse 19. It says that demons believe in God too. Do you guys remember, my, my wife Samantha said, with God it's impossible to overcome sin. Jesus said to his disciples, the flesh is so weak. But Jesus said to his disciples, the spirit is so strong. <laughs> Man, the Bible says in the New Testament, it says, by the spirit, you can put to death the deeds of the flesh. So there's a lot of teachings that glorify the flesh that, that bring a lot of emphasis and importance of the nature and sinfulness of flesh. But there, there's, there's very few teachings that bring the attention to the ability and power and righteousness and holiness of the Holy Spirit that we now have. And that's what it means to walk according to the Spirit. Set your mind, up in, set your mind on the things of the Spirit. Learn how to commune with the Spirit. Learn how to submit to Him, hear, hear Him, and learn how to follow Him. Be led by the Spirit. The Bible says sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit are the opposite of sin, are the opposite of the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh, when they're listed in the Bible, it says, if you do these, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And they're obviously sin. And the Bible says, when it says the fruit of the Spirit are these, at the end of that verse, it says, against these, there is no law. So God's not going to hold these against you because God actually wants you to live in these because God says walk in the spirit who is the spirit the Bible says the spirit is the Lord the spirit is Jesus the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the father the spirit is the father so it's the same God in you helping you how to walk in the way that he has called you to walk so what does that mean walking with God amen so that's 
That's why we have to have faith because we can't see him, right? We can't see him, right? Where is he? He's in here. Where else? He's up there on his throne. Where else? At his right hand. But where else? He's here, right? Okay, I can't see him. So what did we read in Hebrews 11? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you truly believe that God is with you, if you truly believe that his spirit is in you, there's got to be a change. We're going to see that evidence. I'm telling you, man, this gospel is not weak. This gospel transforms. Y'all hear me? Okay. So it says that even demons believe in God. So are demons righteous? Are demons saved? Are demons going to heaven? No, but if a demon some way, somehow had the ability to stop being evil, to stop following Satan, to stop going against God and being filthy and wicked and, and, and just evil and crazy. If a demon had the ability to stop doing those things, it would now have works with its faith, right? It would now have works with faith. Right now, it only has faith because they know God is real. I mean, they know God is real. They don't even see God because it says they were kicked out. You're not worthy. Get up out of here. You're evicted, right? But if they if they had the works with the faith, maybe I don't know. Maybe God will let them in again or something, right? We're not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about that because that's not biblical. So, but, but I, I'm just using that as as an, a little what if analogy, right? But it says that they don't have the works. They only believe. And does that still make them a demon? Yes. So you could call yourself a Christian and a Jesus lover and Jesus team, hashtag Jesus life, all these things. But if you're not actually following Jesus and bearing the fruit and doing the works that Jesus told you to do, it's very hard to believe that you actually have faith to be justified, to be counted righteous as God counted Abraham as righteous. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me, right? All right. All right. Yeah, Isaiah's listening. Isaiah's listening. Let's grow. Israel said the fruits will manifest. That's right, y'all. That's right. Okay. Verse 21, guys. James 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Whoa, that'll mess some people up. It says, hold up. We just read in Hebrews... Hold up. We just read in Romans <laughs> that he was justified by faith, not by works. But right here in James 2, verse 21, it says he was justified by works because he actually put Isaac on the altar. He was ready to kill his son. <laughs> so what does faith look like? <laughs> verse 22. Do you see that faith was working together. Okay, let's stop. Because a lot of people preach about faith, but a lot of people don't preach about biblical faith. Biblical faith, it says, it works together with what? Actual works, actual actions, actual conduct, actual behavior. What you do, what you see. Jesus said, there's a tree and that tree is going to bear fruit. And the fruit that that tree bears is going to tell you what, what kind of tree that is. <laughs> so, so, so you're a tree. I'm a tree. And an easy way to see what kind of tree we are is just to look at the fruit. And the fruit will tell you, you believe like a demon. Or it will tell you, you believe like Abraham. You actually have works working with your faith. You believe like a demon. You know God is real. You feel he's real. You feel a conviction, but you don't do nothing about it. Or you believe like Abraham, you take God at his word, you believe God is real and true and faithful, and you start living your life in the way God has commanded you to live your life. In fact, he tells you to give your life to him. Give up your life. Deny yourself. Be buried with Christ in baptism. Be crucified with Christ taking up your cross so that he, his spirit, can actually live through you. Galatians, come on. Y'all following with me? So it says that 
Abraham was justified by works, <laughs> and that works, verse 22, actually works with faith. Faith was working together with works, and by works, faith was made perfect. <laughs> faith was actually something. Faith was actually faith because it had a working with it. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. So it doesn't say that a man is not justified by faith. It just says that a man is not justified by faith only. Okay. All right. So we were born again because we believed in Christ. We were forgiven of our sins. We received the Holy Spirit and we, we, we made a declaration of it um, by being baptized in water. We belong to the body of Christ, to the church. Let's grow. We are people of God now. But if you're still alive, just like I'm still alive on this earth and you didn't die immediately after you were baptized, um, then there was something expected of you. Uh, it wasn't a demon faith expected of you. It was an Abraham faith expected of you. Um, because we're still around and we're still on the earth, now um, there's a faith that actually has to work in our lives and we have to fight the good fight of faith, continue in the faith. Live by the Bible says the just shall live by faith. If you're just, you're going to live by faith. And right here says that real faith has works. Now, if we put all these together, it should give us a confidence and, and a powerful revelation, right? Of what the Bible says. But it should always also give us a conviction and a fear of the Lord um, so that we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? That's what that really means. Observe how you're living, right? How do you observe what you're living? Observe your fruit. You inspect yourself. You analyze yourself. You, 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 you look at yourself and you examine how you're living. How? <laughs> Look at the fruit. And if your fruit is not matching up with the fruit of the Spirit, with what Jesus taught, with what's written from Matthew to Revelation, Acts to Revelation after Jesus, right? Because he, the Lord spoke a lot of things, taught a lot of things through his apostles after Jesus' resurrection, right? So if your fruit's not matching that, now that's telling you you need to have more faith. You actually need to change something. Why? Because the Bible says that, listen, Jesus, the Bible doesn't say Jesus is going to come. Jesus, it's not, the Bible doesn't say Jesus is going to return and judge everybody according to their confession, according to their denomination, alignment, and alliance. The Bible says that Jesus is not going to return and judge everybody according to their faith, as we know faith to be. Because in that case, demons will get justified too because they don't have works. The Bible says that Jesus, who has been made the judge of all flesh, doesn't say just unbelievers. It says of all. Let's get it right. It says that Jesus will return and Jesus will judge all people according to their works. That's the key word. It doesn't say faith or confession. It says Jesus will judge all people according to their works. I think this is an important message. That's why I'm saying it's supposed to bring that fear of the Lord and conviction. You heard me? Come on, guys. So, verse 24. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. <laughs> so what is Jesus looking for? The Bible says that when the Son of Man returns, when the Son of God returns, will he even find faith on the earth? <laughs> what kind of faith is he looking for? Real faith, biblical faith, his style of faith, Abraham's style of faith. That's why the Bible says that the seed of Abraham is Christ and we are in Christ. And by believing and being justified by our faith, we can become the children of Abraham or heirs of Abraham, heirs of God through Christ. Joint heirs with Christ, right? So we got to have a faith like Abraham had because he's the one that's actually referenced in James 2, referenced in Romans, referenced in Galatians, referenced in Hebrews. <laughs> so it's got to be the type of faith that Abraham had. And it says right here that Abraham was ready with his firstborn son, the son of the promise, the, his real son, right? 
the, the son that he was supposed to have was Sarah, the son that God promised him. He had him there ready to kill him. The Bible says he had him there because he believed God so much that even if he did kill him, he believed God was so powerful and faithful to his word that he was actually going to raise him up from the dead if he had to. <laughs> Come on, man. Is that the type of faith we have? A lot of people say, I have faith. I go to church. I have faith. I give money to ministries and poor people. That sounds like you have a confession and a sacrifice. And the Bible says, uh, oh, 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 did I do a faith? Didn't I do a Facebook live recently that talked about obedience? The how many times the Bible states clearly that obedience is better than sacrifice? That God wants people that show mercy and show uh, uh, obedience works over people who worship and uh, and give offerings and sacrifice things. <laughs> The Bible says that all over God doesn't, God is not pleased with somebody who just goes to worship him every Sunday morning or worships him on their way to work. That's not what God wants. That's not what, what, what keeps God pleased with you. The Bible says that God is a God who wants obedience over sacrifice. Now, you could still sacrifice, but just don't sacrifice and not obey. The first and foremost part of living for God is obedience. Right? Actually doing what he says. Amen? All right. This is so good, guys. You, got, you guys got to share it. I'm telling you. If you just stick to the word of God, you're going to have a, a real good message, a real good sermon. All, all y'all, you know, everybody out there who, who, who wants to be a preacher or, or who wants to, you know, try to uh, preach God's word and try to encourage people. Listen, man, I know we have a lot of examples out there who, who, who claim or who are awarded or who are titled uh, to be great preachers. But a lot of these great preachers are not preaching the word. They just have a skill of communication. And there's a lot of secular unbelieving people with skills of communication. That doesn't make you a good preacher of the word. If you want to be a good preacher, you have to stick to this. Amen. You have to stick to this. That's why tonight is so effortlessly for me to give you this message. Effortless to give you this message because we're just reading James 2, <laughs> Hebrews 11. I didn't, call, I didn't write nothing. I just said, let's go to the word. And that's what's going to help us to grow because the Bible says that the new man is renewed in knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Oh, let's, let's learn uh, what the first church did. Let's learn what this word means in Hebrew. Uh, let's look. Not that type of knowledge. It says the knowledge of God. It says that transformation comes by the renewing of... So, so what we have to learn and grow in, guys, is the understanding of God's word, God's ways, God's will, God's purposes, God's covenant with us and his desires for us, his calling for us. Amen? All right, we're almost done. So let's finish James and, now we're and then we're going to go to Mark. Um, but hold on. Let's just look at this. Okay? And it says that... You are justified by faith and by works. That's basically what he just said in um, James 2, verse 24. Samantha said, not only read the Bible, but also have a relationship with God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Both. Um, because you don't get the knowledge of God just by written, reading the written. You're getting knowledge of God by actually knowing God. So that's a must. Like that's some that's why we you know you go to my YouTube channel, you go um you go to our blog um you, you ever hear me preaching you join our online Bible studies, you always hear me talk about prayer life relationship with God, God's word because that's how you grow. Do you guys remember all the times that Jesus that it mentions Jesus growing, right? All the time, it mentions Jesus being about his father's business, being in the temple, listening to the preachers, actually responding to the preachers in great wisdom, reading the Torah, opening up the scrolls, quoting script. Jesus quoted the, the Old Testament so many times. He quoted David, Psalms, Isaiah so many times, guys. Man, that's crazy. And Isaiah just said, Abraham, he had faith. And he had works to prove his faith. And the Bible, we just read that the Bible calls him a friend of God. Jesus said to his disciples, I no longer call you servants. Man, I call you friends because you actually know the business of the Father. You actually know what's going on. <laughs> friends communicate. 
friends spend time with each other, right? It's powerful, guys. So, likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? Come on. For as the body without the spirit is, and this is the key scripture that I wanted to get to. Verse 26, still James 2. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, I just want to just plant this thought in your mind. Let's say, let's say this is a flower. Hold on. I was going to pull up this highlighter and then I realized that it's got all these bite marks because we got dogs, right? So let me, <laughs> I wanted to pull up the, the nice one. So let, oh, this one's got bite marks too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, this one, this one. Only the cats got to this one, not the dog. So let's say this is a flower, right? Let's say this is a flower, guys. And let's say the flower dies. What are we going to say about this flower? What are you going to tell uh, your, your, your friend about this flower that you guys always looked at walking on your way to work or school? Hey, man, you remember that flower that looks just like a highlighter, bro? <laughs> that flower it no longer exists. That flower is dead. That flower is gone. That flower is the past. That flower is no longer, right? So if something is dead, it actually doesn't exist. It's nothing. It's worthless. It's useless. If something is dead, it's no longer alive, meaning it no longer exists. Okay? Let's read it again with that image in our mind. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Somebody tells you they believe in Jesus. Somebody tells you, I have faith. Somebody. But it doesn't have works. Guess what? That don't exist. That faith don't exist. That's really not there. You really don't have faith. Part of You don't have faith. Okay. We got to get this. It's challenging, but if it's if it's not truth, it's not going to be challenging to us. Because we were born flesh. We lived our whole lives before Christ as flesh. We went to public schools and public markets and public movie theaters and watched, you know, pub, you know, we watched television and movies and Netflix and played video games and listened to music, worldly music. And we knew worldly people and our parents were worldly or if they weren't. They probably taught us something worldly. And our whole lives, we were flesh, 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 driven, flesh, influence, world influence, world inspired. So. If we're just now born again, we're just now trying to mature and grow in Christ and become more and more like Jesus in our works, right? It's going to be challenging if we're actually looking at truth, <laughs> okay? That's why it says renewing, reprogramming of the mind. That's why the Bible says that you go from milk to meat, from a babe to a grown-up by having your senses trained to discern good from evil. And it says trained. Whoever has trained physically or mentally and it didn't hurt, it didn't challenge you or push you or make you sore or give you a headache. <laughs> Come on. Whoever studied for a long test and exam and didn't get a headache or wasn't tired or didn't have, you know, eyes that were hurting. And you just wanted to close them because you read and studied so much for that test. That was a mental training, a mental workout. Whoever has lifted weights or ran and didn't get hurt after the work, that's training. So how do you think it's going to feel when now you're getting truth into your mind and you're trying to decipher it and understand it and apply it? It's going to challenge you. If the preaching you're hearing is not challenging you, it's just saying, oh, you're good. Just love. Oh, oh, you're good. Just believe. Oh, oh you're good. If it sounds that simple and it's not challenging, it's just telling you, oh, just go to church. Oh, just love. You know, just love like a hippie, man. It don't matter what you do. God forgives you. Just love, man. Just love, man. That weirdo love, man. No. If it's not challenging you, it's not the truth that's challenging the carnality mindset that you were raised up with. Okay? So take this. Take this like Diddy. 
Then he said, take that, take that. So take this word, amen. Uh, Israel said, Lord, help us produce to manifest our faith. My wife said, must be the light on top of the hill, salt of the earth. That means we got to put work in. Jesus did, amen. He said, follow me. How much work did he put in? Transformation by the renewing of the mind is imperative. Let's grow. Take that, take that. Let's grow. All right, let's look at the last scripture. So it says, just as your body is dead without the spirit, so faith is dead without works. You got somebody who tells you, don't judge me, man. Yeah, I'm still cheating on my wife. Don't judge me, bro. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm still watching. Don't judge me, man. I'm still, I'm still getting drunk all the time. I'm still cussing all the time. I'm still beating people up all the time. I still want to kill somebody. That's why I'm in the military. I just want to kill somebody. <laughs> somebody tells you this and they tell you they have faith in Christ and they're a Christian. Just remember, faith without works doesn't exist. It's not real. It's not faith. Amen. All right. Let's go to the last scripture, y'all. This is tough. This is tough. I, I know. I know. But I mean, I got a hard job, man. I ain't got an easy job, man. I got a hard job. You know, you got to sometimes, sometimes you got to tell people they don't want it, things they don't want to hear. You know, you got a hard job out here, man. You don't, if, if you don't sell cotton candy, you got a hard job. And we don't sell cotton candy around here. That cotton candy is easy because you don't even got to promote it. But it's the truth that's going to set you free, that's going to hurt you, it's going to cut you. The Bible says the, the Bible, the word of God is a two-edged sword slice. You're going to get hurt, but it's for good. It's for your growth. Amen. Let's grow. Let's grow. <laughs> All right. Mark 11. Mark 11. And we're going to read some red letters because those are the best letters. Verse 22, this is Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. This is Mark eleven twenty-two. For assuredly, that means like for sure. Like what I'm about to say is 100% factual. Don't you ever think something contrary from what I'm about to say. He says, for assuredly, I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Hmm. What kind of belief is he talking about? What kind of faith is he talking about? Was Jesus biblical? Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Okay, let's stop right there. So let's go back to verse 22 and 23. Jesus said, have faith in God. Verse 23, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. And that person saying it, if they don't doubt in their heart, but they truly believe, guess what? You're actually going to see evidence. You're actually going to see it happen. You're actually going to see demonstration, a.k.a. works, a.k.a. action, right? That's why when Jesus said, rise up and walk, the people actually rose up and walked. They were healed because he truly believed that God was with him and that the father told him, Heal the sick, cleanse the rep, the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. So because Jesus truly believed and he had the kind of faith that we just talked about during this whole Facebook Live, the type of faith that if it's real, it's going to have some demonstration. Just like when God prophesied about the Messiah and said he loved us and he wanted to save us and deliver us and free us and fill us with his spirit and give us eternal life and forgive our sins and all the way back. From the beginning of the Bible, he kept prophesying, but in Matthew, we see that he actually came in the flesh to save us, to be our Savior. That's why Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrated his love. God showed works. God had works with his faith. That's why it was real faith. 
Amen. So if it's real faith, we going to see some. If it's real faith, something's got to shake. Something's got to move. You got to see evidence. Hebrews 11, 1. Again, it's what? The evidence. The evidence. Amen. You're going to see something if it's real, guys. So I just want to encourage you guys. I remind you of what the word of God says. And I showed you some things that I know are not promoted and preached and declared too much these days. But we have to get back to the word in order to actually follow Jesus because Jesus is God. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the spirit. And it says that this word is inspired by God to help us grow, to correct us. Right. So if Jesus says, follow me, and then he spoke through the apostle Peter. After his resurrection, he spoke through Peter, he spoke through Paul, he spoke through John, he spoke through James. Then he gave John a revelation, a vision of what's to come. He wants us to look at those things and learn from them and apply them to our lives. That's why we got to read the word every day, y'all. Because we won't really know what faith is by just listening to a lot of these sermons or listening, trying to learn from the world. Like a lot of people say, oh, I have faith, but I also have wisdom. So I'm going to, right? And then what comes after What comes after that, what comes out of their mouth after that usually contradicts God's word. So it just proves that they don't have faith. And that's why a lot of them don't be healed and a lot of them don't be, you know, really, they don't really see um, the promises of God in their lives. Because it's, they don't have faith because they fail to actually have works with it. Right. They, they, they think wisdom is what the world says, but wisdom is what God says. And if what the world says contradicts what God said, then you better not be listening to the world because they're not going to help you see what you're supposed to see, walk in what you're supposed to walk, because they're going to contradict God. And without you being able to know what God said, you can't believe what he said and expect it and receive it. So you can't walk in real faith, biblical faith, when you believe the world because their wisdom is not God's wisdom. They contradict the world. They have mere flesh. The Bible says they only have flesh. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They have flesh. And the Bible in Galatians, it says that the flesh and the spirit are contrary. They are in opposition. They are enemies and they will always contradict each other. So if you're listening and learning from people who don't have the Holy Spirit, I feel sorry for you. You you gonna see some. You not you not gonna see this in your life. You are not gonna see the mountains moved. A lot of preachers teach: don't move the mountain, climb it. Yes, that's that's great advice because Jesus said climb the mountain. <laughs> no, Jesus said move the mountain, man. You just gotta have real faith, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Bible says if we truly believe God, there's gonna be words, there's gonna be actions, there's gonna be things that prove it. Okay, so that, I just want to encourage you guys. Keep believing God. Keep believing. Keep believing God. Just like when you believed, when you when you when you confess Jesus, I hope you confess Jesus because you actually believed in Him in your heart, and then you were baptized after that, and, and joined a church or or joined Bible studies or, or joined something, right? Because you were baptized. Somebody baptized you. A Christian had to baptize you, right? So I'm sure they told you, hey, come join us. You know, come come grow with us, right? That's that's how Christianity works since the book of Acts. We see that everywhere, right? So we just got to keep that going. <laughs> but if you did that, if you did that, guys, that means you said you believed in Christ. And usually when we, like me, I know a lot of our friends that are on here right now, that, that, that are part of our, our Bible studies and, and they're very involved with our ministry and they come to our home meetings on Saturday nights when, you know, when the government's not telling us we can't gather or, and all that, <laughs> um, you know, they, they also um, have that, that, that salvation testimony where it was like a, it was like a fear of the Lord thing. It was like, man, I, you know, I'm starting to believe Jesus is real. And, and if Jesus is real and he's going to come back and judge everybody, I don't want him to say the Depart from me. I never knew you, you doer of iniquity, right? So a lot of us, when we initially believe in the Lord and in God altogether, there's usually a, a, a conviction and fear of the Lord there that tells us, yo, we got to start living differently, right? So if, if, if that's how you initially felt back then, I hope that now that it's been, um, you know, for some people years, for some people decades, for some people months, maybe, you know, I hope that now, that we've been reading this and we've been learning how a Christian is supposed to live. I hope that our works 
are truly proving that we initially believed in him for real, right? And that's the fight of faith. That's the that's the bad. That's that's us running the race with endurance. We have to continually remind ourselves and allow the Spirit to remind us that the Lord is coming soon. How many times in the New Testament does it say? Have hope. Be hopeful for his return. Be hopeful for his appearing. The Lord will return, right? The Lord will judge all people according to the word. The Lord will be back for his bride. You know, in Jesus himself, he gave so many analogies and parables about brides and bridegrooms, about servants and masters returning to the house. Like God wants us to remember that he's coming again soon. He will judge all people. And he does that because he wants to inspire us and motivate us and, and convict us to have a, a type of fear of the Lord so that we, we know that, oh, shoot, it, I really believe God. He's, he's, I'm going to be face to face with him one day. He's going to open up the books of my life and he's going to judge things according to justice, according to righteousness. Like God doesn't lie. So you think God's going to be like making up stuff? Hmm. Oh yeah. You, you never cheated on your wife. Yeah. You never, <laughs> you, you, you didn't go, you know, and, and get drunk every, every new year's Eve and, and you know, all of your birthdays. Yeah, yeah. 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 You obeyed my word. God is not a liar. The Bible says God will not be mocked, right? So right now, today, while we still have time, we're, we're, you're not dead yet, right? I'm not dead yet. If you're listening right now, you're not dead. You're not the flower that, that you're still alive. So you still have time to correct that walk and really start living by faith. The just shall live by faith, the type of Abraham faith, because that's the only faith that pleases God. Amen. The Bible says that. Let me let me go to it. So I hope you're living by the type of faith that God wants to see. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. <laughs> what I just say, guys, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Where? What is this? Hebrews 11, verse 6. Who wrote this? A lot of people say Paul. Who inspired Paul? The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of God. So who is the Holy Spirit? God. So who said, without faith, it is impossible to please him? God. So what is this saying? Hello, I'm God. And I want you to know that if you don't have faith, I'm not pleased with you. <laughs> Come on, we got to keep this simple, man. Like, we got to keep this simple, guys. Like, what is faith? We, we, we got to go back. We can go back. But I'm sure you guys are understanding now. We'll go back to James. Faith works with works. Real faith, complete faith, is believing and actually doing it. Right? So God is saying right here, if you don't, have works with what you say you believe, I'm not pleased with you. That's the word of God. That's God himself saying that. Because we believe that every scripture is inspired by the spirit and that the spirit spoke through the apostles, right? It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. If God is writing that, God is saying, hey, body of Christ, you guys want to know how to please me? Live, live by faith. And if you don't know what faith is, Check James out, because I'm about to speak something through James right now. And then, you know, he's writing through James. <laughs> right? And then James says, you're not justified just by faith. You're justified by works, too. Uh-oh. So now we got, now we got a, a crazy, crazy challenge right now. God wants us to please him. When he returns, he must be pleased with us. And the only way he can be pleased with us is if we live by faith. And the only way we have real faith and we really live by faith is if we actually put some action to our belief. Amen. It's serious. It's powerful. That's that's the Bible, man. And, and that's what we looked at tonight. This wasn't Nick preaching. This wasn't Nick you know, reading his notes and re Nick coming up with, you know, cool things and cool sermons and entertainment. Like this is just Nick reading the Bible that, you know, you have yourself. And that's what the Lord told us today. You know, he wants us to know what real faith is. Amen. So if this blessed you guys, if this helped you, if this if this brought clarity and understanding 
to what God's real word is, is telling Christians under the new covenant, under grace. That's crazy, right? Because a lot of times we're like, oh, we're under grace, you know, obedience and works. That doesn't apply to us. <laughs> well, we only read the New Testament today, y'all. <laughs> and <laughs> we only read the New Testament to y'all. So <laughs> I don't know who told you that, but that sounds like a false something. <laughs> that sounds like a either false or ignorant or, 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 you know, bad intention having person, you know, I don't know what they are. They might just be ignorant. You know, they were taught that, you know, they might have good intentions, but they're wrong. Whoever they are, they're wrong. Whether they have good intentions, bad intentions, whether they have the Holy Spirit or have a demon, whoever said that to you is wrong. Listen, under grace, we just read, there needs to be works. There needs to be an obedience. There needs to be action with our belief. Amen. So if this blessed you, if this helped you, if this gave you clarity, please share this video. Please like it. Just hit the like button. Like that's super free. Like I know, I know a lot of us, you know, humans, we can be cheap, we can be selfish, we can just be out for ourselves, right? Just receivers, never givers. But a like or a love emoji, a share, a comment, Nick, this helped me. Nick, this blessing. That's free, y'all. Like that don't cost nothing. And, and what it does is actually help my Facebook page. You know, even with my YouTube channels. If I put up a YouTube channel, what helps promote the YouTube channel for free on the face on the YouTube platform is when people like it and comment it and interact and share it. And, and, and even if they thumbs it down, like that still helps bring attention to your video. So um subscribers, right? So so if you guys want to support the Facebook page, the Instagram page, YouTube page, you know, please let me know. Hit a comment, like it, share it, whatever, right? That that helps. It's free. Amen. Um, other than that, I mean, I think we, I think we said enough tonight. I think Hebrews 11, I think, um, James two, I think Romans four, and I think Mark 11, um, definitely, definitely hit the, hit the mark for tonight. So bless you guys. I love y'all. Um, if this is, uh, something that you just came on, I'm about to finish it and I'm about to upload it on my Facebook page. So just watch the replay, um, get your Bible. We're going to look at, at a lot of scriptures. Um, and yeah, if this is something you're watching in the future. Once I'm uploaded, once I've uploaded it, man, please share the video. So somebody else can, else could watch it before I end the video. Does anybody have any comments, concerns, questions, additions, contradictions, debates, which I got, man, which I got. Oh, Isaiah just reminded me of something. Love you guys. Israel said, this definitely blessed me. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Gloria said, amen. Isaiah said, diligence. My, my, my wife said, God. Isaiah said, it's urgent. My wife said, sign up for the Bible study on that link. Oh, she sent the link. I, I think I had put a link. I put a link already on the on the video title. So there should be a link either on the video title or under my wife's comment. If you hit that link, you can actually sign up for our online Bible studies. Thank you, um, Isaiah and, and Samantha for reminding me about the Bible studies. Thank you, guys. So um, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we have an online Bible study through Zoom that that um, that is blessing a lot of people. We're all growing we're all being blessed. We're all getting understanding that we didn't have before. Um, and what we do, we just look at the Bible. We start reading together. Uh, we ask questions. We interrupt each other to ask questions, to elaborate, to make comments. Um, because that's how you grow, right? You know, um, teachings are good, but a lot of a lot of times during teachings, nobody has a chance to ask a question. Nobody has a chance to share a scripture that connects with that, or an idea that helps bring clarity to others, or 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 maybe a uh, or maybe a, uh, a question, or maybe something they're confused about, and we can elaborate it. Right? When somebody's teaching, you you can't you know you can't yell at the platform like, "Hey, Bob, preacher man." Hey, can you elaborate a little more? No, the preacher's going to give you what he's going to give you. Like, whether you understand it or not, he's just going to give it to you, right? So the, the the beauty about Bible studies is that you actually can ask us to elaborate on what we're talking about or explain what we're saying or, 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 or tell us more. Nick, t give me more scriptures about what you just said because I'm still kind of not believing that, right? That's what Bible study is. We look at the Bible. A lot of these Bible studies are just 
hearing somebody teach. That's not a Bible study. A lot of Bible studies just everybody's just reading the word. That's that's Bible reading. A Bible study is you actually looking at what is being said, thinking about it, talking about it, referencing other scriptures and stories and passages and idea, and actually growing in the understanding of what you're reading. So a lot of times we usually just do one chapter a night because that's how much we talk, <laughs> right? Because it, we gotta. It's not about quantity but quality, right? It's about you actually understanding. So we'll read it slow. We'll comment. We'll talk. We'll We'll ask questions, we'll interact and all that. We also pray for one another, right? That's what the body of Christ is for. You look in the book of Acts, people weren't just gathering and hearing teachings. People were actually praying together, right? People were actually reading and hearing the word together, amen? So that's what we do. So sign up by hitting the link. Listen, guys, completely free. Like these Bible studies are completely free. If you truly want to grow in Christ, right? These are the Bible studies to join. They're completely free every Tuesday. We're hoping to add them um, at, at Thursday to that, to do them every Tuesday night and Thursday night, um, hopefully um, at, the, at the beginning of the month of May. Um, but yeah, just sign up for those Bible studies, man, and, and they're going to be a blessing to you. Um, the Bible studies are aka a growing session for the body. Man, that's a, yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that, that's awesome. So yeah, if if you want a growing session, if if you want to grow with other believers, man, jump on. My wife said they are not biased at all. <laughs> so yeah, just join the sessions. They're not a biased opinion. Oh, that 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 they are the best, and that your opinion is not a biased opinion. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so she means that when she says it's just the best. She ain't just saying it because she's my wife. So. <laughs> So yeah, jump on the Bible studies, guys. If you guys um, feel like this message is good for you, um, has helped you, if you feel like I gave you something spiritual somehow, um, then um, you can hit the same link that I put on there, that my wife put on there, and you can actually give to our ministry, our uh, non-profit ministry, tax-exempt ministry. That means, you know, if you give to our ministry at the end of the year, we're going to send you a uh, something, tax deductible, page something. My, my wife is the one that handles all that. But you're basically not going to pay taxes on, on, on whatever you give to a nonprofit ministry tax ex exempt organization. So if you want to give to us, if you want to bless us because we have been a blessing to you, um, hit the link and um, it'll take you to the ministry PayPal. You'll be able to give whatever you want to give. You'll also be able to partner with us if you want to, you know, give the same amount every month. That means to partner and that means uh, recurring payments on PayPal. So you can do that as well if you want to tithe. Um, uh, if we're like the main place that you're growing with, if I'm the main person you're learning from, then you can tithe to the ministry as well. That's biblical. Okay. Um, so other than that, I mean, what, what else can I say? You can give, you can sign up for the Bible studies, like, comment, share. Um, I'm coming out with YouTube videos like almost every day. So I'm, I'm back active on, on YouTube. Um, so if you want to grow um, in, 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 on YouTube, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, if you like listening to, you know, to to organized, you know, things and edited videos and you want to hear about certain topics such as, you know, your relationship with God, growing in God, prayer, uh, evangelism, uh, healing, you know, grace, the new covenant, the gospel, uh, the gifts of the spirit, things like that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Everything is on that same link. So I'm just going to tell you, just go to that link and see what you want. And then, you know, hopefully we got some offered there that, 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 that can help you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Samantha said tax deductible receipt will be given at the end of the year. Okay. All right. All right. YouTube sensei. <laughs> the Bible study. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Israel. Don't be joking with me. I'm still mad at you, man. That water. That water. Love you guys. Y'all have a good night. I'm out of here. And uh, let's grow. Let's keep growing. I hope to see you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock um, p.m. Eastern time. Okay? It's free. You know, I've, man, I spent thousands of dollars. Like, as my wife, I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on meetings, um, uh, conferences, uh, books, um, big books, uh, expensive things. That didn't really help me 
that was just the same Christianese, right, repetitive lingo and quotes from old preachers and all that. I spent so much money on stuff that didn't help me grow. But these Bible studies will help you grow, guys. Like, we, we will grow with you. And it's free. Like, that's good news. Like, it ain't that. It's free. <laughs> Amen. So, I hope to see you on Tuesday. And um, Fierce said, put out the one you preached at Restoration about the rear view. Oh, yeah. I got, yeah, I still got a lot of um, videos of me preaching at different churches in different cities that I haven't I haven't uploaded on YouTube yet. I'm going to work on that in these next in these next few weeks. Put out some preaching um preaching clips on there or the whole sermon or whatever. I gotta find it. I got I got it. I just gotta find it, bro. <laughs> Israel said, text me when you're done. Man. Here he goes asking for forgiveness, man. I don't wanna should I forgive Israel? Should I follow Jesus and, and, and be and be quick to forgive? Or should I or should I have faith like a demon? <laughs> All right, the Bible says that even demons have faith and and, and, and guess what? They're not right with God, obviously. They're evil. Why? Because they don't have the works. <laughs> should I forgive them and be like Abraham and have faith with works? Or should I just believe God and, and, and not forget? What y'all think? <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Love y'all. I'm going to text you, Israel, because I believe in God. Not like a demon, but like Abraham. Let's grow. Let's grow. Love you guys. Y'all have a good night. Hey, share this. Share this. Samantha said, you know what to do. <laughs> He loves you, man. I love you, Israel, man. I forgive you, man. Toast. I forgive you, bro. I forgive you, man. This water, this water tastes better. It tastes better. <laughs> I put, I put too much ice on the other one. That's why I made such a mess. I was like, hmm, let me put as much ice as, as possible. And then a minute later, everything just spills on the floor. That's why it took me forever to clean it up. It was like the whole freezer was down there. All the ice cubes that my freezer has were all down there on the floor. It was horrible, man. But I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Yeah, have a good night. Love y'all. evangelism tool check out our free prayer t-shirts they're $15 each and they will surely help you in reaching out to those around you you're basically walking around with a t-shirt that offers free prayer to those around you with no strings attached the link is on the description below and I promise you they will bless you by helping you bless those around you